Sias Turks. Sias Turks. Sias Turks. Welcome to the Science Jerks. What's up? I'm Dave Chacho. I'm here with my co-host, Robert Chan. Hi. What are we talking about today? I'm just in a buzzword tizzy this week. Uh, lasers, nanotubes, I'm sorry, nanobubbles. Not even nanotubes. Taking it to a whole nother level. We're going from cylinders all the way to straight spheres, y'all. Tubes, bubbles, what's next? Mm-hmm. Cones? Um, no, but that's in another story. Of Parallel Um uh, We may be in a computer simulation. That is interesting to me because... Because the Matrix is awesome, and you think the story involves Kung Fu in some way? Yes. I want to be in a simulation so bad. <laughs> because I feel like living in that red goo, it just seemed so, nice. so calm and nice. Warm, and if that was yeah. what's really happening, mm-hmm. if I'm just sitting in a pot of warm goo right now, mm-hmm. I would just It would be not so entirely much unlike... <laughs> The weekends you spend with your slanket. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> my, that's me. My Vicodin and yes. cozy. Uh, we have a very special guest this week. His name is Matt Manser. I'm not that special. You don't, are don't the oversell specialist. It. Don't oversell don't it. I mean, be you are the most humble. special guest we have this week. <laughs> a stand-up comedian, a comedy writer, an improviser, a member of several groups of comedy people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just keep it vague. Don't, yeah. don't bring him up. Just In to... fact, probably a member of infinite groups of comedy people if you're just making groups of comedy people. Um, I mean, I guess technically, there are probably lots of groups of people where I don't know the other people in the group, but we would be a group right. of like, right. like five foot six be just... guys with beards who do comedy. Right. So that would that's a group. Down that's a group of comedy people. <laughs> yeah. I know all of them. What's your group? You're, you're in uh, Bonafide at UCB. Bonafide at UCB, uh, right for a top store. At IO. Mm-hmm. Topical yeah. sketch show and bona fide as a non topical sketch show. What do you write for at uh, Second City or Groundlings or Bang? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, Nothing. oh, I see. So you're going to be like that. You, uh, yes. You're I'm, discriminating I'm, against the other theaters. I am. Right? You disgust. Oh. Me. <laughs> yeah. Other How theaters are you? not as good. You not provide the theaters. Six bearded comedians are <laughs> all the same. Hundreds <laughs> of thousands of theaters across the world that you're not performing in. <laughs> and I say that's racist. Yeah. I'm a little racist, so. Sure. Well, I mean, five, six, not little, but I mean, it is it's shorter than average. Let's I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not about I, I it's about average. Lost. No, because I'm five, six, so it's like right. I'm not a little racist. Right. I'm like uh, an there average. are much smaller racists out there. You're an average racist. I mean, there are, I mean, dude, some five foot tall. Have you ever seen a five you're, foot tall Klansman? They're like six foot with the hood, but, you know, you can tell. You can tell they're tiny. I feel like that's probably having stature issues is probably one thing that makes you join the clan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I gotta think that there are more short people in the Ku Klux Klan than an yeah. average subsection of your population. I would imagine. Would you let us know the next time you're at a meeting, Matt? Are um, you part of the subsection of racist five foot six <laughs> tall comedians with beards? <laughs> uh, I'm not allowed to disclose that. Gotcha. Information. No, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. How do you feel about science? <laughs> I'm against it. <laughs> really? I do not like science. You're against it being uh, happening or <laughs> its existence? I'm against or its like existence. It. I don't think there should be science. I think we should just guess gonna be and make up our own stuff. Awkward hours. What this is going to be? <laughs> well, let's get started with guessing some <laughs> awkward science. <laughs> yes. Oncology. Chan here with Dave and Matt Manser. Lasers, nanobubbles, tunable are there plasmonic any more nanobubbles. Trendy science terms that you can there jam are into this article. No more. This is the pinnacle. This is as good as it gets. Tunable plasmonic nanobubbles for the destruction of cancer cells. What is a right? plasmonic nanobubble? Basically, what they do is they have gold nanoparticles, which we've been using for a while. And to be fair, like nano, the, the term nano gets applied to a bunch of shit that just means small. It's like small flecks of gold. It's a nanoparticle of gold. It's like Some, a nano racist. Yes, <laughs> just like it. A very so, tiny a, racist. A very tiny. <laughs> Nano penis. What they do is that they excite the nanoparticles, much like your racists, 
with <laughs> lasers. Racists often are excited by lasers. Racists love lasers. Yeah. No one else likes lasers, but racists do. I don't know. I, f- I mean, like, there are a lot of people that like lasers. <laughs> Certainly, yeah. If you go to a Laser Floyd show, going to be a <laughs> lot of racists there. Uh, just... now, do racists explode when you aim lasers at them like nano bubbles do? Yes, they do. Ooh. Yes, they do. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a fun game. <laughs> um, what happens, basically, is they build these nano bubbles use the gold particles and they put them next to cancer and they like, like little mines little bitty mines like they teeny just... tiny mines and they <laughs> they make them in different sizes and the large ones when they get excited by the laser they just shoot a laser at it and what they did is they, they put they put them in these... your body and then they shoot a laser at you theoretically and the little bubbles explode they haven't done that yet basically it's just been in a petri dish so far they put cancer cells in there and give them a couple different types because they wanted to try doing not just this thing of like exciting the nanobubbles and blowing up cancer that's good because you want to target just the cancer cells don't want to target the, the healthy cells <laughs> right. uh, and that's and what how big doing. are these explosions like there's a little piece of your arm fly off <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Little pockmarks. Are... It's, it's, it's gold and nanobubbles. Mm-hmm. Could they make cheaper nanobubbles? Yeah, it, it seems a little like... That are not made of currency. <laughs> Man, if you're going to put nanoparticles into your body and shoot lasers at them, do you want to go cheap? Do you wanna, I just put copper and that's fine. We'll just, just let that hang around. Not everyone can afford gold is what <laughs> I'm right. saying. Um, like, um, we have not, poor people get cancer too. silver and bronze nanoparticles? A, if you can't afford gold, you can't afford the goddamn laser either. <laughs> B, teeny tiny, te- infinitesimally small. Nano. So it's not like it's not like you're rubbing gold bars on you and then just... <laughs> now, would this work if you just drink a lot of gold schlager and then yes. shine lasers in yes, your eyes? Yes, it will. <laughs> Fun fact, those flakes are nanoparticles. Ah. <laughs> so if you, if you so already have what, cancer, kids... Gold schlager cures cancer. Get some yes. laser pointers. That's why 22-year-old sorority girls, cancer-free across the board. Every last one of them. <laughs> but yeah, but basically what they do, they have larger ones and smaller ones, and she the laser at it the larger ones explode and they kill the cancer cells leaving the healthy cells behind the smaller ones make tiny holes in cells which then they can use to inject medicine or uh dna reprogramming I forget cool. what they call them. so you mean so, like the bubble has medicine in it and it goes into the cell and like yeah the small ones because they make just a, when it a explodes small... then it releases the medicine in yeah the cell. it didn't be Makes a little cool. hole in the cell and sh- shoots it in, mm. and then you know f- they make like Vicodin bubbles. So you, you could all just, of your cell, I don't, and I don't, you could just take a Vicodin, and just shine a, <laughs> when you shine the laser on yourself. It just all at the same time, all of the little Vicodin bubbles explode. I feel like I guess you could just take a Vicodin <laughs> <laughs> if you had a lot of money and not a lot to do with it. Then sure, fucking make this gold is what I'm going to do if I get the MacArthur Genius Grant. <laughs> If you can afford gold and lasers, you can afford to have the explosions shoot Vicodin into stuff. (laughs) Yes. Right? Yes. This is why I want to be a rich man. (laughs) I don't (laughs) care about money. I just want to create nano gold Vicodin bubbles. I just want to make crazier and crazier (laughs) drugs is all I ask. Someone's got to be in the forefront of that technology. It's like, it's like women who are who are gold diggers might just they might just have cancer, right? And then right. Just, and might be people judge them as being greedy. I don't love you for your money. I just want to cure my cancer. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, that is going to ruin an entire genre of rap songs. That's yeah. why she ain't messing with no broke nigga. Right. What? Whoa. Because of the gold. Somebody gonna bleep that. <laughs> A quote, a quote, gentlemen. I am the, the, quoting a uh, song. Uh, Apparently, there are tall racists too. <laughs> the uh, the uh, lyric you're supposed to use is "broke, broke." That's the radio. Is edit. that the oh, radio? Really? really? That's the radio edit. Yeah, she, I thought they messing with no broke, broke. I thought they like t- turn it backwards so it goes ain't yeah. messing with no, no broke. <laughs> Wait, a minute. Uh, she ain't messing. Uh, Did you I just figure out a... how to say nigga backwards and then say it? Yeah, <laughs> Agin, evil for Zagin. Niggas for Life, NWA, that's their uh, second album. Well, I guess um, there's black racists, too, then. <laughs> what, no, being part black, I get to say black things. You have studied how to say these words backwards and forwards. <laughs> so so it's, it's, I ain't saying that she's a gold digger, but she, she ain't messing, messing with, with no broke, broke. broke. 
<laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that... That doesn't make any sense. I think so it means... Kids going, Mommy, this song doesn't rhyme. What's a rope? <laughs> Mommy, can I call the black kid next door a broke? <laughs> is <Yeah>. that bad? <laughs> or is that an acceptable thing to say? I think it's just to like make make the the edit so obvious... That you know that they replace something and you kind of figure and, out, and oh, I know oh, what they no. really said. They're just forcing you in your head to say the word. Can yeah. we just go back to bleeps? Bleeps were awesome because you knew that there was a thing being taken out there. It was terrible. And you, you, know, you would then be driven to go find out what that bad thing was. Can we just listen to the real lyrics and not worry about these words anymore? You disgusting, <laughs> goddamn <laughs> racist ontology. Invisible cars, the way of the future. Oh, no. no. I need a place to pick my nose. <laughs> Invisible from the inside, not from the outside. Whoa. That's what's pretty exciting. Wait, Wait so the people inside are invisible also, or? No. no. So this is, oh, this is like a, this is like a Wonder Woman kind it's of like thing. It's like being inside Wonder Woman's plane, but not... Being outside, okay. You don't no, look. You, you're not understand. just driving around, and you look like you're hovering down the road. Okay, that's no, not it, what it is. Okay, so it's it, it from the outside. It looks uh, from the outside. It looks like a car, but from the inside, from the inside, you can look anywhere. It you looks want. to the driver like no, it's invisible. No, 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 well, no, no. Seems... Active camouflage happening. No, 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 okay, no. Okay, no. let me start the segment. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Chacho here with Chan and our guest Matt Manser. Already terrified of this thing. They're, they're using optical active camouflage. This it, is uh, it's a thing in Japan. Been, it's a thing they've been trying with like like to camouflage tanks, right? Yeah, we've talked about active camouflage on our last podcast Ah Science if you want to go back into the, the archives. There's a several different ways that researchers are doing camouflage and one of them which is kind of seems like one of the most rudimentary ways but it's actually seems kind of cool in this application is to mount a camera on the back of the car and then mount a projector inside the car that projects what is behind the car onto the interior of the back seat. Right. So, so from the driver's perspective, you look back and it looks like you can see through the back seat. It's like a fancy version of just you know the video the the, the cameras they the have cam- on yeah, fancy cars right now. Video in the car, but yeah, like I was I don't want to back into something. So yeah. but their goal is to eliminate all blind spots by making the interior of the car transparent. To the driver's perspective. Nope, no, 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 that no. Because I do not awesome. want to be driving and look down at the ground, look <laughs> to the side of me, and feel like there's absolutely. You don't want to see there. the box of kittens that you just ran over. I don't. Oh God, that would be the most horrible thing to just feel like you're just floating in midair. That was the problem that I had. Uh, I mean, I I, lo- I love uh, riding around a scooter, but uh, when you first start out driving it, it basically feels like you're on a chair. That is yeah. going 60 miles an hour out in the fucking open air. How many scooters are you driving around? Enough. Okay. Enough to have established <laughs> that like, that's so a one, feeling. I guess one. That's <laughs> yeah. probably enough. I've that's driven one. a few uh, scooters and mopeds ever, around town. I've never been on a They're super fun. I mean, it, yeah. it's like a, like, you know, you... It's not crazy like a motorcycle. It's a little, it's a little more laid back. But also, you know, it, you're sitting down, just sitting straight up. And then just going along as fast as you please... Just, just yeah, at out. some point you realize you're just flying along at very fast, not very far from the ground. Mm-hmm. And it especially becomes apparent when a BMW smashes your bike while you're riding it and yeah. drives away. Yeah. Which happened to me not too long ago. Fucking BMWs. Do you drive a BMW? Yeah. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I drive all the BMWs. It was you! <laughs> You racist hit and run. Yep. Wait, so he hit you because he's racist against you? Um, or probably. That was a black scooter. Oh, okay. No. Okay, that totally makes sense. When I heard sense. scooter, I was thinking Segway, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, okay. That <laughs> makes a little more yeah. like, <laughs> It's completely different. You're not thing. sitting in a chair. You're just standing and hovering down yeah. the road. You weren't even That's a thinking whole of, different thing. Yeah. You weren't even thinking of there's rascal scooters, yeah. like uh, mobility scooters. There's also the Razors type scooter with like no um, engine at all. You just kind of basically like a big skateboard. Yeah. But you went with Segway? <laughs> really? Yeah. Someone says scooter, and you think like, "Oh yeah, this is the thing that uh, Job drives around on Arrested Development." Yeah, really? that's exactly what I was thinking. Really, I was. I usually don't hear scooter for like for like Vespa or what do you? Oh, you just call them Vespas? Yeah, yeah. But what about the cheap ch- uh, Chinese knockoffs? That's still a Vespa. It's like a it's like Kleenex. <laughs> I was picturing you riding brand. around on uh, the Muppet scooter. Right. 
Yeah. The Muppet Scooter? The, the Muppet Scooter. The scooter. Muppet. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Muppet okay. Comic Not the scooter, scooter the, the Muppet scooter. That makes sense to me. I was like trying to think of a scooter just like with bedecked in Muppet regalia. Which would be pretty cool. It would be But I meant of awesome. riding around on the back of a Muppet. Sure, sure. Down the freeway. Can we get active camo on a scooter so it looks like you're just sitting so you're in midair on nothing? On a Muppet, yes. <laughs> yeah. Active camouflage to <laughs> look camo like... Fl- to look like Beaker, and then and put uh, something on the muffler so it just goes me 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 Trademark science jerk, 2012. Doppler Beaker. Are we living in the Matrix? Please, please, please. Yes. Yes. Matt. Yes. No. Uh, It seems unlikely. All right. Well, we may be able to find out. (laughs) This is not a new idea. Uh, Are we living in a computer simulation? The the Matrix is, you know, we're living in a um, robot run thing so they they can use us for fuel, which is patently ridiculous. But there was a uh, philosophical paper in 2003 where they postulate that, you know, like basically post-humans have created a simulation of their ancestors and that is what we're living in. Mm-hmm. Doesn't this philosopher say that it's likely that we're living in a computer <laughs> simulation in his paper? What are the what's the what is I, it like eighty percent? Like I how was, well so this, uh, is it? His, his name is Nick Bostrom, and I haven't read his actual paper. Yeah, I, I, I was still confused by it because he said that there were three. One three of three possibilities. possibilities is true. One, the human species is likely to go extinct before reaching a post-human stage. Okay, that makes case, sense. Which case there is no matrix and never will be. And then we're, we're real people. Any post-human civilization is very unlikely to run significant numbers of simulations in its evolutionary history, which is to say the post-humans are like, okay, cool, we're done, we don't need to... Because, yeah, as as a post-human civilization, you're going to be running simulations for all sorts of things. Because that's basically what we do now. It's like, how do we get to the moon? How would we get this rocket to the moon? Let's run a bunch of numbers, and it started... You know, I mean, these simulations start out as uh, pen on paper. You know, yeah. like in, in the ancient Grecian times, they were figuring, like, well, how do we fling this rock everything. over this? Simulators for airflow over airfoils and simulators for, yeah. you know, things well, I'm like say, I'm saying, like, a, and... a simulation could be as simple as figuring figuring out what C squared is, the hypotenuse of a triangle. Chance That's making a diagram creating, right now. I bet it's A squared plus B squared. <laughs> it is. Uh, but, you know, that that's a simulation. I simulated but, it in my head. So, so it would make sense that, you know, once you get super smart, you're going to be running simulations, those sorts of things. And then you may even go back, like an archaeologist. What are they doing? They're digging up bones and archaeologists, paleontologists, so it, and trying to create a simulation of, like, like what what happened? Where did these things come from? How did they exist? How so did they get to So back to his us? three things. The second thing is it, that future the, civilizations are unlikely to run simulate. They don't give a fuck. Simulations. And then the yeah. third, third one, one is... Is that we're they're very likely to run simulation, right? In which case, he says we are almost certainly living in a simulation, right? Mm. Because it would be more likely that we I are guess... in one than not. If there's more time in the whole time of the universe, if if there's simulations with people simulated living in them, then there's probably more time in, of the entire span of the universe that simulations exist and have people in them than not. Yeah. Or another number-based thing is that there is one scenario in which we are alive, and if these post-humans are uh, creating simulations, then they've probably got 10 gajillion different simulations running, all of which like, well, what happens if uh, Ronald Reagan was... Uh, elected president in uh, 1980. What happens if uh, uh, Jimmy Carter was president in 1980? And, uh, and then we just try and figure out, you know, like, what happens there? What happens there? Surely this is so, the uh, darkest timeline. <laughs> None of us have goatees. Although all of us have beards. <laughs> we, yeah, so we, that's good, though. Okay, that's We could up. all have that's goatees weird. in a matter of seconds if we mm. wanted to. Good. Or do you think we could all become evil very quickly. In the, in the good timelines that we're sitting here at this podcast, but we don't have the... The goatee part of our beards are shaved off. In a good timeline, podcasts are never involved. <laughs> you don't do a podcast if you're doing well. I, in in a, a good fact. timeline, everyone does podcasts. <laughs> everyone is and nobody doing listens podcasts. To <laughs> that is wait, exactly. maybe this wait, is wait, the best this future. Is a good timeline. Then. This is not it's a good. The best time. of all popular worlds, the possible <laughs> worlds. <laughs> so yeah, what he's suggesting though is. Okay, they're doing a thing called lattice quantum chromodynamics. Oh, those buzzwords. Those beautiful buzzwords. Oh. Uh, which basically what they're trying to do is 
simulate the universe from the ground up, like starting with the teeny tiniest subatomic particles and saying, okay, you know, let's simulate this. Let's simulate this. This is how the universe should operate if certain things hold true. And then they can compare it to the real world, like they get measurements from cosmic rays. And if we are existing in a real four dimensional space, then the readings are going to come up one way. And if we don't, if we're existing just as a simulation, then the physics basically of the universe are going to be a little bit different. Then we should be able to, to detect the limits, I think, what's what they're saying. Like yeah. cosmic rays, which come from vast, far off places in the universe, would probably behave differently if there was some sort of, you know, computerized limit to the universe that Mm -hmm. we're in so yeah so that's what they're doing right they're going to try to measure cosmic rays and see if it looks like we're in a box yeah (laughs) the only problem is that currently the amount of space the volume that they can accurately recreate with these simulations are one one hundred trillionth of a meter Uh, so far a little bigger than the nucleus of an atom. So until we get to the point where we can even do, you know, an entire atom or heaven help us, a whole human being, we're a long ways off from, from getting to it. Or, you know, longish, given Moore's law. Yeah. I mean, this is a little bit, I mean, it's definitely theoretical. The, the fact that once someone has the capability technologically to create an entire universe simulation, they might probably figure out a way to adjust the cosmic rays so they look right. Yeah. In fact, especially if they're if in trying the future, to figure out how they're doing. They probably have read this article <laughs> that this guy wrote and they've tweaked their cosmic ray algorithm so that we can't detect it. Oh, there's just like there's stuff they're not paying attention to. I mean, there's a lot going on. Sure. If you're drawing pretty trees, Bob Ross style, you're going to draw the grass. You're not going to be too specific about it. It's happy grass. So Fuck it. Everyone's yeah. done. You just say they, they probably just like check in every like three or four hundred years or something. Just yeah. Yeah. It's oh, God. Yeah. They're still doing podcasts. Fuck this one. <laughs> Sometimes there's right. a bug Let's and like ahead. a galaxy blinks out <laughs> and then it comes back on. <laughs> we just aren't looking in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And sometimes a black cat that comes and shows up twice in a row. It's deja vu. And then that's when that's when the agents come. Or there's just like a lot of black cats. Just tons of black cats. I want cats. to live in the black cat simulation <laughs> where everyone is just black cats. For every- yeah. <laughs> and you know what, guys? There's no racism there. No, no, because everybody's... <laughs> we're, everyone's we're a all, black cat. We're all black cats on the inside, really. We're tell, all bad luck. Tell them. <laughs> That's racist. So. Stop crossing my path, you guys. It's time for a quiz. It's time for... It's time for a quiz. We're here with Quizmaster Jessica... Quiz Master? Quiz Mastica. I, have, <laughs> I was... <laughs> Mastica Jessica. I was staring at her name there, Jessica Lee, and I started to say Quiz Master Jessica Lee, and it just got all conflated into one... Please welcome Quiz Master Lee. This would go Masker-ly. way faster if you just combined all of your words into one. <laughs> it's like Quiz Massacre. Yes. <laughs> Which is Ooh, what it could be. That's a good name for the segment. Ooh. <laughs> it's time for the Quiz Massacre with your Quiz Massacreus. JessicaSlee.com. <laughs> Jess, how you doing? Hey guys, I like that quiz massacre. You know That's what? All right, awesome. we may start using it. It's time for a quiz massacre. I'm thinking about getting my own cards that say "Quiz Massacre" from Vistaprint. <laughs> Ooh, oh, are you yeah. sponsored by Vistaprint? No, That's I'm not it. sponsored by Vistaprint.com. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> Where you can get free prints. God damn it. How is she making more money off of this show than we are? <laughs> Anything above one penny would be more than we're making. Um, including no, any, one penny. Yeah, anything above, anything zero above or including one penny <laughs> is more than we're making off this podcast. <sighs> okay, hit us with the first question, Jess. Question number one. Tomorrow's weather forecast report for Venus would be A, snow, B, cold and clear, C, hot and humid with clear skies, D, overcast and hot. And the answer is? The answer is D, overcast and hot. Yeah. Yeah. I got it wrong. Ah, it's okay. the answer! Yeah! <laughs> you don't have the answers. Wow, this is a, she is cruel. This is our first <laughs> vendetta quiz. <laughs> did, wait, but did you slash your tires or something? Is, Maybe. Is there a history that we're unaware of? <laughs> she seems to have it out for you. Yeah. 
All right, next question. All right, number two. With few exceptions, a computer infestation program that can replicate by attaching itself to other programs is called A, Worm, B, Trojan Horse, C, Terminator, D, Virus. And the answer is... The answer is D, virus. What the fuck? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Seriously? Did we? Okay. By no. no. Attaching Mancer and I both said, picked B, Trojan horse. Yeah. I said A, worm. Yeah, I was. I thought worm, but. I was thrown off by attaching itself to other. That's what, programs. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I guess a virus does attach itself. Yeah, that's true. A virus okay. attaches itself to yeah. other programs, right? Okay. The self replicating thing made me think virus, but then, uh, okay. Yeah, so we all got it wrong. You're all dumb dumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Number three, a quick and simple method commonly used to inspect whether a metal is stainless steel is to A, test if a magnet will be attracted to it, B, test if it will react with sulfuric acid, C, pass a current through it and measure its resistance, D, measure its specific gravity. You could just try to stain it. (laughs) Yeah. Sure, sure. You could play stained. It's been a while since I... (laughs) Are you singing a Stain song, man? I am. I am singing a Stain song. It's my favorite band. <laughs> uh, I'm on the outside. Uh, just in case uh, anybody's we- wondering, I wrote two. <laughs> I, just, I just stop and look at it and look. Like, what did I? How is that? That's one of the that's answers. That's weird. <laughs> what is the answer, Jessica? The answer is A, test if a magnet will be attracted to it. Dag, yo. I wrote current. I wrote D. Whichever oh my, one that was. Man, we're getting clobbered. Dang. But this there's is... other metals that magnets... Or wait, does stainless steel attach to a magnet or not attach to a magnet? I think it doesn't. Oh, we'll have to doesn't. find that out. <laughs> uh, number four. All right. Which of the following is most specifically designed to measure low temperatures? A, alcohol thermometer. B, pyrometer. C, cryometer. D, mercury thermometer. What's the answer? Answer is C, cryometer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we all got that one? Okay. Oh, oh thank goodness. That doesn't matter. <laughs> we, <laughs> no, it does matter. Because <laughs> if we end up only getting one point out of five, <laughs> that's going to that's gonna hurt the Well, pride. it matters for me because I can't catch up if I get an answer right, and so do you guys. The no, podcast is over. Answer. If we get one out of five, the podcast ends. <laughs> all right, number five. Number five. What percentage of the world's ice is in Antarctica? A, 10%. B, 25%. C, 50%. D, 90%. I had to try and remember which one was the Arctic and which one was Antarctica. In case you're wondering, Arctic is where Santa lives, and Antarctica is where Happy Feet happened. Gotcha. That's a, yeah. That okay. Penguins that, are Antarctica. All. Right. Okay. Santa, I basically gave penguins. you the answer. Elves north. <laughs> did you? Penguins Wait, south. Did how did you do that? What is the answer, first of all? The answer is D, 90%. What? What? I got that one. There's no way. Yay! Is, Yay. I, thought, wait a minute, I thought the Arctic was the one that was all ice, and Antarctica was the one that had land mass with ice on top of it. There's no way there's 90% of the ice is on the South Pole and only 10% on the North Pole. Isn't Antarctica just all ice anyways? There's no way no. the North Pole has only 10% or less of the world's ice. Apparently, it's it's melting, guys. Where are you, <laughs> are you on misinformation.com? Hey, if you guys want to take it up, you should contact bestsamplequestions.com. <laughs> Don't argue with the quiz massacrist. But what just happened was Matt Manser just oh, caught up. shit. You got it right. Yeah, I got it right. Oh, damn. All right, then. Um, which means it's a three-way tie. <laughs> we each have two points, which is not good. <laughs> it's not good, but it leads to great drama. Who's going to take it next episode? Find out in a few days. Thank you very much, Quiz Massacrist Lee. Uh, where can they find you online? If someone were to look for LinkedIn at uh, <laughs> Lee JC. I'm not joining LinkedIn for the last That's time. Only LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, also... <laughs> You can find me on Twitter at Jay Lee Rules. 
Excellent. Okay, okay. we will see you next week. Thank uh, or you. Next tomorrow. Next next episode. Yep. Or in a few seconds. Which we're filming. <laughs> <laughs> we're filming. Oh God, what is going? Forget on? the illusion. <laughs> I'm done. And cut. My, what a big mouth you have, Grandma, says Little Red Riding Hood with just a hint of suspicion. The wolf sneezes. Bless you, says the little girl. Chan here with Chacho and Matt Manser. That was, of course, the classic tale of Little Red Riding Hood. Keep going. What happens next? As written by a computer program. A computer program they have, or they're building, to tell stories. I want to know if the wolf sneezing contributes to the hero's journey, or was it just a non sequitur? Maybe it will. The intent of the program is for that to become part of the story. Ba- basically, what, what, what is, they did... What would Joseph Campbell think of this <laughs> program? Dude, he and would be into it. He has be so into has it. Has this computer studied McKee? Has he studied <laughs> <laughs> story? <laughs> is he saving the cat? I mean, I also, I think, I think Little Red Riding Hood was already written. <laughs> there is that. That's a good point. There is that. <laughs> uh, okay, here, here, here's the deal. It's a piece of software called Zapagy. X-A-P-A-G-Y. And it, it's obviously not there yet, but the idea is they're taking stories, breaking it down into machine code, into a language the computer understands, basically taking bits and parts, like Little Red Riding Hood. This is a character. Here is, that's a discrete element. Wolf, like, parenthesis, uh, sneeze, unparenthesis, slash... Yes. Riding Hood, bless you, something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, it takes sneeze, and it's got wolf, and it puts, it starts putting these things together, and once it has, it, it starts creating interconnected events from them, and some these things affect other things. Normally, you have a computer program that builds rigid logic rules for future actions. What this does is it takes, as I said, events, and then puts them together and links them as elements rather than as a straight-ahead chain. So like, I have to get my screenplay bought really quickly before this computer. If they're already making Law and Order episodes with this. <laughs> that, that is a fact. Uh, is that a fact? It is not a fact. <laughs> <laughs> but it probably should be. It might as well. I think you you can write a Law and Order episode by just throwing ten scripts in a blender and oh yeah, patching yeah. it yeah. back together and just get just like a famous guest star, like some sort of comedian that you wouldn't expect to be the killer. Only they're always the killer if they're the guest star. <laughs> but yeah, what, what this thing does is it's kind of how, you know, computers are linear and the human brain is a network. They're trying to basically get this program to network, to take all those elements and connect them rather than string them together into a line. So it's looking for patterns in story and like trying like to reconnect stories cause together. Cause and effect. Is that uh, one yeah. thing causing the another? And- right. And if it doesn't have any uh, connections then it just throws something in there and then finds a way to connect it through that. Like it's screenwriters. Yes, exactly like screenwriters. Like, like improv. Terrible, terrible screenwriters. <laughs> well, that, that's the interesting thing is that this may actually be a an important uh, Are we going to be going to computer point? improv shows in the future? Because I already have too many invitations to improv shows by humans to make them on all. computers, mm-hmm. on computers, my computer is inviting me to a lot of improv shows. Your computer could invite you to it, it, an cool. improv show. You don't even have to leave your house; it'll just do oh, the improv. Okay, for you. now so. it sounds a little bit more inviting. If mm-hmm. I could just stay in bed and watch the improv shows, you can invented stay in bed by my laptop <laughs> and watch shitty improv so much easier than you could go out and watch shitty improv. That's the I'm magic into of this. it. Just put me in the the red slimy goo, and I'll lay down and watch improv for the rest of my life. <laughs> this is this is what you hope for. This is the best case scenario. <laughs> this is what I'm working is, towards. That is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show. And that's our show. Thank you very much to our very special guest star, Mr. Matt Manser. Yeah. Um, that was that was you, like, uh, thank you for for doing you, a Kermit outro. You had a you've got that green jacket on as it just it was in my head. And also the Muppet thing and you know For the listeners at home, Matt Manser is wearing a green jacket. They get it. <laughs> They get it. But I not, made that I just, clear. I, just painting, I was just painting a picture. I'm not wearing my Beaker shirt, though. Oh, that's true. I remember, I, yeah. I have yeah, a Beaker shirt yeah, that I'm not wearing. Uh, yeah, you, you won the Tournament of Nerds, didn't you, as Beaker? 
No, I lost the Tournament of Nerds as the Swedish chef. I got to the finals. Oh, that's oh, right. And it was a travesty because you should have won. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. How can Indiana uh, Jones beat the Swedish chef? Uh, <laughs> Swedish chef isn't afraid of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> the Tournament of Nerds is available online, I believe. That's one of the shows Matt's in. What else is... Uh, oh, did you... Were you in one of the... Uh, uh... I'm not in any of the online Tournament oh, okay. Nerds stuff. So, way to bring but that up, Dave. Well, it's a... Bring, first but still, bring up is it's lost, an online show people bring should up. check out. And uh, Matt is a, a, an occasional contributor to the... Regular group. performer at the UCB show. There you go. Where else can people find you on the internet? Twitter. Uh, Manser Matt on Twitter. Nice. At Manser Matt. Yeah. And it is uh, M-A-N-S-E-R, not M-A-N... S W E R. Not the show Mancers. Not the show Mancers. Right. Yeah. There does yeah. exist a funny video of Matt Manser pretending to be on Mancers. Well, it's a new version. It was a new version of the show Mancers, but it's just but me it's just being asked, answering questions, answering these awful questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, Written by Ann Riemann. It, does Bonafide have a website? Or when? When can Bonafide find has it? a Twitter. What's Bonafide's Twitter name? <laughs> I think. Have you look for Bonafide, Bonafide, Bonafide or Bonafide? UCB? I think it's Bonafide used to be. I think that uh, sounds UCB. about right. Do you post things on there, or is it just like come see your show? It's um. It's promoting a show, or it's it's out of context things from rehearsals, oh, those or or fun fun rehearsal picks, uh, or or videos. And where could people find? Do you have any shows coming up? Stand up or sketch or improv or anything? Um, you can say no. It's not. A- uh, Bonafide's next show is the fourth Wednesday of January. All right. Yeah. At yeah. UCB Theater, check that out. Uh, you can find me at nine hundred nine 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 RPMs. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Dave Chacho. You can email us at Dave at sciencetricks.com, Chan at sciencetricks.com. Check um, out our website. You want to give out your email so that people can spam you? And <laughs> <laughs> it's Matt at AOL. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you got mad at AOL. That's that's pretty <laughs> yeah. good. You, You're you living in a simulation early. of the past, man. Yeah, <laughs> uh, check out our website, sciencejerks.com. Our Twitter is at the science jerks, and check out our next show on this coming Friday when Man Master will return and we'll finish the quiz and talk about other fun stuff, like the end of the world. The end. Of the world. If anybody comes up to me and says it's the end of the, the end of the world on that day, I will punch them in the fucking throat. Well, we're going to talk about that. it on the next podcast a lot, probably. So get your punching shoes on. Well, no, <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm going to punch you. I'm saying if someone legitimately comes up to me and says the Mayan said the, end, the world's going to end, so here have a flower, then I'm going <laughs> to punch him. Why don't you want a Is flower? It- because it's tainted. It's tainted with dumb. I don't want any part of that. Anyone nice. out there listening, if it's the end of the world and you hand me a flower, I will not punch you. I I'll would. probably try to have sex with you, actually, if it's actually the end of the world <laughs> oh, and you well, hand me a flower. <laughs> well, no, that, if it were the end of the world, then yes, obviously I would try to have sex with them. But it's not the end of the world, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm going into punching mode. It's like male, of, male or female. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna try be a to lot have of, sex with whoever it is, whoever's around, and if it's the end of the world. A lot of awkward conversations on the 22nd <laughs> when the world so, hasn't ended. Uh, so that was weird. So again, forget no, what I said. It? Okay, I'm sorry. Did you call him Manzer? What do people call you, Manzer? <laughs> people call me lots of things. <laughs> I've just never heard it with a Z before. It's like answer. Yeah. Or like pantser, like someone who takes pants off people. No. No. 